Hi guys and welcome to Escape We Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Phoebus Proteus Limited Edition which is launching tomorrow March 1st. I received this watch for free from the PhoebusWatch.com site. I don't have to send the watch back but you guys know the deal by now. It's not going to sway my review one way or the other. And as always if by the end of this review you want to pick one of these up I'll be leaving the necessary links down below. Those aren't affiliate links or anything like that. That just takes you right to the PhoebusWatch.com site. And for my European viewers, check out PhoebusWatchEurope.com. I will also be leaving that link down below. I'm assuming that's just faster shipping and uh, you don't pay any VAT or any taxes or anything. So uh, that's a win-win for you guys. Everywhere else, you have two options, U.S. location or uh, shipping from China, and that's for everywhere else. So um, just keep that in mind while you're shopping their site. So the retail price for this watch is hopefully showing up right here on the right side of the screen. I don't have the actual numbers for you from the site. Uh, they're just not listed yet, so they're going to be up um, tomorrow. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. The steel version, it's $315, I believe. So uh, I'm going to guess this is going to be a little bit more expensive than that just because it's bronze and because it's limited edition. So, And also the carbon black dial, that fetches an extra $15 in the steel case. So I'm going to assume that's going to be similar uh, as for this bronze case as well. So just keep that in mind when you're shopping. The watch is available in five different colorways that you see here. You can also get this in stainless steel, like I said. Um, but these ones, you know, this review is for the bronze one here. And yeah, I think all colors look really cool. I'm pretty happy with this green one. So the watch case, bezel, and screw down crown are all CUSNA bronze. It has a screw down stainless steel case back, a sapphire crystal, 300 meters of claimed water resistance. It's supplied on a pretty nice leather strap and it's powered by the Seiko NH35 automatic movement. So I've kind of been on the hunt for a big chunky bronze dive watch. I was tempted by a bronze Willard, but uh, you know when they reached out and asked me if I wanted to review this for you guys, I just had to take it and I said, yes, send me the green one. And I'm so glad they did because it is awesome. So what makes it so good? Uh, well, I think you're gonna have to stick to the end of the video to find out why it's so good. Um, yeah, I've, I've just really been enjoying this watch and I think you guys will too. So I say we get right into the review, but before we do, do a quick wrist check. Wearing the Pagani, uh, I don't even know the model number, I'll leave it down below. Really happy with this one. Go check out the review right up here. All right, let's check out the dimensions. A right, case diameter of 41.9 millimeters, a thickness of 14.2 millimeters, 22 millimeter lug width, lug tip to lug tip of 49.0, and on the supplied leather strap, it weighs 122 grams. So it is exactly what I wanted, a big chunky dive watch, 122 grams on a leather strap. It's pretty big, uh, thir or 14 millimeters thick. I mean, that's, that's pretty chunky, but it is a 300 meter dive watch, and I have no doubts that this thing will pass a 300 meter test if you really put it to it. Um, yeah, it's very solid built, and I think it is great. Uh, I like the case size. I like the case shape. It's very angular. You got these nice sharp, you know, turn downs to the lug there. I think it hugs the wrist nicely. I think it looks good. I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my seven and a half inch wrist. And as you can see, I think it wears great. Uh, really happy with the way this thing wears, despite it's, you know, larger than my preferred size. I think it wears pretty good. You got a nice turn down to those lug tips. And that angular case just kind of makes it look a little bit smaller, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I've got no real complaints with it. It's very comfortable. I think it sits on the wrist pretty nicely. The strap is nice as well. So yeah, I like it a lot. And here we are in some direct sunlight. And before it goes away, I'm going to try and get you a shot here. Uh, but yeah, I think it looks really good. Nice te texture on the dial. Nice light play off of the bezel and numerals. I, th I mean, everything looks really good uh very happy with the way this watch we this watch wears and the way this watch looks so uh, i say we go inside and throw it on some straps and we'll get back to this review and here we are on a black rubber strap it's got a little bit of a texture to it and i think that actually looks pretty good this is how i've been wearing it mostly uh, i like the green leather but uh it, this watch just is more suited for a uh, a rubber strap in my opinion so yeah i think that looks really good very comfortable i'll leave the link for this down below i believe it's on amazon um yeah, nice strap, and I think it looks really good. I th you're not going to go wrong with a black rubber strap on this watch. And here we are on a lighter green Tropic strap, and I think that looks awesome. Uh, usually not a fan of Tropic straps just because the ends are so flat, but because this has that flat surface on the uh, lug holes there, um, I think it works really good, and I think it matches the dial pretty much spot on. 
Yeah, and the green and green and bronze has always been one of my favorite color combos. So I think that looks really good. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, here we are on a green nylon strap. This is just one layer underneath the watch. They're modified from by me. Um, and again, I think that looks pretty good. This is more just to give you an idea of, uh, you know, one layer underneath the watch there. Yeah, right. let's go throw it on another one. Yeah, just for fun, threw it on this bright orange uh, rubber silicone pass-through strap there. And again, I think it looks looks actually okay. Uh, yeah. And here we are on my only uh, two-layer nylon strap here. So that's how it looks on the wrist. Sits up a little bit tall, um, but still uh, pretty comfortable in my opinion. I think it looks still looks pretty pretty good. So um, yeah, obviously gray would not have been my first choice, but I don't, don't think it actually looks that bad. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of how it's going to look. Uh, I think it looks really good. Uh, very happy with this. And obviously, different colors are going to look better with different dial colors. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's go back inside and let's get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about the case finishing. And the case finishing, uh, it's really nice. Uh, and it's not really supposed to be nice. Um, you know, these bronze cases are supposed to age and patina and kind of look a little rough and beat up. Um, and, you know, this one is starting to get that point, but it's still fresh enough. I've had it for uh, about four days now, I believe. And yeah, I think I think it looks pretty good. It is starting to darken just a little bit and get, you know, get the patina that you kind of expect from it. But it's really nicely done. So you have on the top of the case here, you have a circular brushing on this surface. Nice vertical brushing on the angular lugs here, as you can see. Brushing on the tips of the lugs. Brushing in between the case here with that kind of squared off lug opening. I think it looks really good. Uh, nice turn down to those lugs again. Horizontal brushing on the case sides. It has a nice polished chamfer too, which I wasn't really expecting on this watch. But I think it kind of adds to the uh, the look. Uh, it just looks cool. It's going to age a little bit differently than the brushing does. And yeah, overall, I am pretty happy with it. Coming around to the crown side here, nice big crown, and it's kind of got that swirled knurling. I mean, it looks cool. It's very grippy. It's it's really nice. Very happy with it. Even this top edge here is nicely rounded, so it's not sharp or anything like that. Um, yeah, really good grip on that crown, and I'm very happy with the feel of it and the size of it. I think it looks really cool. They've got that really nice octopus logo on it, which I think is sweet. Just really cool. One of the better logos, I think, in the... Uh, the micro brand business and overall i think the case finishing is really nice flipping it over to the case back here awesome case back so you get your phoebus proteus 300 meters and then you have individual serial numbers here so uh, this is number one of 100 i'm not sure if they gave me the actual number one or if this is because i'm a reviewer and i got it a little early they're giving me one, number one i don't know um, but yeah these will be individually numbered which is kind of nice to see and a nice touch the case bag itself, it's a mixture of circular brushing and polishing. I think it looks fantastic. You kind of have that bead blasted look in the middle with the polished octopus. I mean, it is, that logo is just really cool. The case bag itself is awesome. Really nice and smooth. No issues with it. This bottom edge here it might be a little bit soft, but it doesn't really interact with your wrist much. Um, so yeah, overall, I am very happy with the case finishing on this. Uh, I will say right on these inner corners here of the... Uh, the lug opening there that's a little bit sharp uh, but it's not anything you really ever notice on rest um, I mean I've never noticed it on rest I, I really just only noticed it while I was changing straps on this thing so uh, just something to keep in mind it's really not that bad all right so let's talk about the bezel on this thing so the bezel insert on this thing it's really interesting uh, it kind of has like a sandblasted kind of sandy texture to it it reminds me a lot of a yacht master relief bezel uh, so it's that kind of style so it's that matte finish on the back all the numerals all of the markings are polished i think it looks really cool i think it's going to age really nicely as well i'm kind of curious to see how this thing looks after it has you know a few months on the wrist uh, pretty happy with it though it has a loomed pip at the 12 o'clock position there uh, the bezel itself Again, it is CUSNA bronze, so that's going to patina nicely. It's polished on the top edge there, as you can see. All the little notches and the bottom edge are brushed, and I think it's pretty good. Um, the bezel action, it is 120 clicks, unidirectional. Uh, there's, I mean, it's rock solid. There's no play in the bezel at all. Nice, solid clicks. So, very happy with the clicking on this thing. 
I mean, it's nice and even. I think, in my opinion, it is the perfect resistance. And, I mean, it just lines up spot. Oh, one more. It lines up spot on, as you can see right there. Very happy with it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a rock solid bezel. I like it a lot. There's no bounce. There's no wobble. It looks good. It feels good. It's a good bezel. It's a really good bezel. All right, so let's talk about the crystal. So I'm going to test it for a sapphire real quick. And it is positive for sapphire, which is not a surprise in a watch in this price point. But it's a pretty nice sapphire crystal. It is AR coated and it's pretty clear. It's not, I don't think it has too much of a blue tinge to it. it might look like that on camera, but it's really, it's not blue at all really in, in person. Um, so very happy with it. Plenty of AR coating. And I mean, it's a double dome crystal, as you can maybe see right here. It's a very subtle, very subtle dome crystal. Um, so you got nice clear viewing angles, even at these extreme angles here that you can see. And I think it looks really good. Uh, pretty happy with the crystal overall. This type of crystal, this double dome crystal, uh, it does put off a lot of reflections. Um, so because it's domed, because it's, you know, the nature of this crystal, it's arced. So it's going to pick up reflections from all over the place. So, um, yeah, they needed to put a lot of AR coating on it. They did. Uh, it's still not perfect, uh, but it is most of the time not an issue to read this thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the crystal on this thing. All right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. We're going to get really close and talk about it. It's got some layers to it. So on the outer edge of the dial here, you have a minute track, and that is an applied minute track. As you can see there, it is raised up above the rest of the dial, and then you have your applied indices that are kind of inset into that chapter ring. So that's really a, a pretty cool touch, in my opinion. And that chapter ring, all that white you see there, that is loomed. So that is BGW9 loomed. It looks really cool. We'll get to the loom shot here in just a little bit. Um, so the applied indices, they're all the same indices at all the hour markers, uh, except for the three o'clock there. And the three o'clock, you have a circular date window. That date is pretty nicely centered in there. I mean, it's pretty small, but they got it to fit in there. And I don't think any of the dates look bad. We'll get to that in just a little bit when we talk about the movement. Uh, so yeah, pretty happy with that. Really cool look to it though. Very nicely done. And on the bronze models here, these are all kind of a rose gold color to them. I think they look fantastic. The handset they used on this thing, so you can see obviously that lightning second hand, uh, really a kind of a cool touch that is loomed on the tip there. I didn't really notice that until I got to the loom shot, uh, but that is loom there. Uh, the hands themselves, I think they're really nicely sized, reaching right out to the minute track, reaching right out to the tips of those hour indices. Uh, very happy with the hands. They're finished really nicely, and you can see they're double faceted there. So they catch the light, they play with the light, and they're pretty much always visible, and that's really helpful. Uh, the logo on this thing, really, again, very cool. It kind of has a metallic sheen to it, that automatic 300 meters down at the 6 o'clock. Um, yeah, everything there just looks really cool, and the texture on this dial is awesome. It's kind of a sandy texture. And I think it looks really, really good. And I'm very happy with the way this thing looks. Uh, and I think you will be too. I mean, it's a really cool dial. Um, yeah, it looks it looks excellent. Um, speaking of excellent, let's get to the loom shot. So here it is against a couple of the other watches in the collection. Uh, these are kind of my big boy watches when it comes to the loom. They have excellent loom. And you can see this Phoebus hangs in there with them. I mean, it's, it's excellent loom. Really, really happy with the loom on this watch. It's a really nice application of C3 on the hands and the indices. And then that BGW9 chapter ring, I think, just kind of sets it off just a little bit. Gives it some interest to it. I think it looks really good. I'm very happy with the loom. All right, so let's talk about the movement in this thing. So the movement is the Seiko NH35 automatic. I'm going to top, pop up my time graphic shot right here. This one's not running great. Uh, it's not terrible, but, uh, you know, plus 12 seconds, that's not too bad. The beat error is a little bit higher than I'd like to see, but... Um, yeah, this just, just lends me to believe that Phoebus is not really regulating these movements. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. I, I mean, I have still have no problems with these movements. They're great movements. They're reliable. They're accurate enough. And I'm, I'm mostly happy with them. And this is no exception. Um, I think that's fine, um, especially for the price and what you're really getting outside of that. So yeah, the movement itself is operated by this three o'clock screw down and signed crown there. Really cool signing again. Uh, very happy with this. The screw in, screw out action is just really nice and buttery smooth. Very happy with it. Lots of grip on the crown. It's a perfect size. I think it looks cool. Nice satisfying pop out from the NH35. First position hand winds it. Really nice and smooth. 
second position is your date change so I'm gonna pop through some of these date windows here and you can see that I mean they line up pretty darn good just like almost just spot on so very happy with that and I, I like it I think it looks good um, popping it out to the third position here hacks your movement so this is the NH35 it hacks and hand winds 21,600 beats per hour so six ticks of the second hand every second um, about 40 hours of power reserve um, it does everything you need it to do uh, they're cheap they're reliable easy to replace easy to work with easy to find parts for if you want to mod these things so um, yeah it's a great movement I got no problems with it um, popping it back in starts up the second hand as you would expect everything functions as exactly like you'd expect nice smooth screw in action I'm very happy with it uh, accuracy of this movement and the I guess the beat error of the movement not quite on par with uh, some other NH35s I've had but it's not anything totally out of the ordinary I think so um, yeah overall I am pretty happy with the movement in this watch all right, so let's talk about the strap on this thing so these do come with color match straps so blue dial will come with a blue green comes with green etc um, really nice strap though very happy with it it is 22 millimeters it tapers down to 20 millimeters got plenty of adjustment holes here I'm kind of in the middle for my seven and a half inch wrist so it's gonna fit some uh, uh, I'd say the perfect amount of wrist sizes um, probably down to six and a half and up to eight and a half so um, yeah it should fit you just fine comes with a nice bronze buckle here with the Phoebus logo in it very solid buckle very happy with it one floating keeper one stationary keeper right out of the box it was pretty flexible and comfortable so I have got no problems with it my only issue with it is that it doesn't come with quick release um, I think at this price point they should offer some quick release uh, it does say genuine leather here whatever um, it does have the Phoebus logo there which is kind of cool um, but yeah I really want to see quick release spring bars and a watch in this price range I guess I know why they don't do it and that's because those quick release spring bars they aren't quite as strong as regular spring bars um, so if you are going to dive with this watch you want the strong spring bars in it uh, but let's be honest nobody's going to be diving with a leather strap so <laughs> just uh, yeah something for Phoebus to consider in the future I think adding quick release spring bars would be beneficial uh, but it is a nice strap uh, pretty happy with it I think the color is cool um, yeah it looks good I'm, I'm, I'm overall pretty happy with it but this one it's mostly going to be living on rubber straps in my opinion so um, yeah it would be nice if they offered those quick release so there you go guys that is the Phoebus Proteus limited edition to 100 pieces per color um, you're going to have to act fast to get one of these things I think because it's a great watch the Phoebus Proteus in stainless steel sold really well for them they have a couple models that are sold out currently so uh, I think these are going to go pretty quick so if you want them I think you need to act fast um, because it's a great watch uh, I think it looks cool um, you know it's got a reliable movement comes on a good solid strap really solid bezel action nice crown good loom uh, yeah it's a nice overall package and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it so I think that's it for me though thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one see ya